Okay, Saturday morning in the kingdom, and it's going to be warm. Yes, I don't have my sweater on yet. Oh, it's unreal. Yesterday, I wore my sweater and my jacket, and I was sweating holding a stick. That's the joys of being an old guy. All right, so this morning, we woke up to plus 11. It's probably plus 20 right now. It's really warming up, but it felt... oh. Woke up to plus 11 Celsius, but feels like plus 10. And then on the OYO scale, plus 52 Fahrenheit, but feels like plus 50. It's going to be a warm one today, so I think we'll be using the pressure washer. That way the water's splashing all over me. Yes, and the grease and the oil too, so I'll be cooled down. All right, a quick, quick scroll. Today is June 22nd. I can't remember if there's anything important on this day that happened to my life in the past. Yes, I know there's a day in June here at the end of the month when I said I do the first time. Oh, what was I thinking? thinking yes i was on drugs or something or drinking yeah i was drinking professionally back then oh that sun is warm it's hot and dick has already flown over this morning when i was having my morning coffee he was high and just flew to the edge of the house and everything like that but i can't videotape him out the window because when they enhance the video quality or whatever the bug screen on the window affects it so it doesn't how'd you say deteriorates it so it can't be used in the court of law all right so i have to wait till i'm outside to get a fresh one but when he came back for his second trip he flew to a little bit to the north yes i don't think he understands that statistically wise you gotta crash your helicopter after takeoff because the mechanic or some joe boy has adjusted something and then it crashes so that's why i'm concerned I know nothing of these plane crashes or anything like that. I've only been in three in 12 months. That was back when I was young and I would say drinking professionally, but I survived. And after the plane crash, after we did, I think our third plane crash that month or that year, the company I worked for went bankrupt. I don't know why, you know, you start crashing airplanes back to back there. You kind of, it's a little hard, but that was like 30, four, almost 40 years ago. So that means that there was insurance back then, but the insurance company kind of didn't like that. What, you just crashed it the, for the third time? Yeah, he was a good pilot. He just couldn't land and take off. Just a minor detail. All right, so today we're going to have the 45 Chevy out, and we're going to give it auxiliary power. Yes, auxiliary power. It's going to go zoom, zoom, twice as fast. Oh, yes. Well, I better go. Here comes the boss. Okay, after morning coffee, it's Saturday morning and it's warm. Look at that flesh for the mosquitoes to enjoy. All right, we have a big, big day planned here. We're not waiting for the staff to be done her real job to come and help. We're going to set the tripod up with the me phone on it. Yes, we're going to have the loader running. We have to move the 39, the 45, the 38. And we can't forget the green toy over there because that's going to lift the motor out. Yes, we have to lift the motor out because I went and looked at the old pictures and everything like that. We have to take the motor out. We're going to double check to make sure the clutch is still in it. And then we can get this shaft out and then we can order the seal from Sir Rodney. Yes, don't laugh on a D6 Caterpillar 9U. To change the seal on the input shaft of the transmission, you take the transmission out or you take the motor out. But it's easier to take the transmission out because you have to take the shafts, three shafts out of the transmission, change the seal, and then put the shafts all back in. All right, so we're used to this, but we have the equipment, we have the tools, the technology, and the beverage. We can't forget that. All right, let's get some equipment running here and get this project underway. Okay, just about lunchtime and it's a slight breeze which feels good. It's getting warm out here. I'm wearing my t-shirt. If it gets any warmer, I'll have to go put my muscle shirt on. My muscle shirt is basically like a push-up bra for the ladies. It doesn't include the muscles. Yes, all right. So over here, we had no problem starting to move vehicles. All right, so you've got the 39, the 38 GMC, and the 45 Chevy over here. Okay, 40 years ago, back in 1983, these were at the Pink House in Alexander, Manitoba, where I grew up. And the funny thing is, we'd be running around with the booster cables and the air compressor. Yes, Dad had a little air compressor, one cylinder, plug it in at the shop, and then drag it across the manicured lawn, yes. And then air up the tires so we can move vehicles. And I, I don't know what year the air tank become popular, where you just air it up, carry the tank over, and fill your tire. All right, let's go check the lifting of the motor. 
Okay, so we're going to lift the motor out. I think I know why I didn't do it back in 2017 because it was June of 2017, according to Facebook memories. Yes, uh, this is when I was working on it. But I think I never took it out because the load would be the cap capacity of the loader to try and get it out. Moving TD18 motors, D6 motors is easy. This thing is huge. All right, so the plan is to lift it out, put it on the 45 Chevy. Yes, the 45 Chevy. The rate we're working on that ramp deck, it could be next year when we get the welding done, but it's the thought that counts. But here, if we dip the motor out, it's a unit, okay? It's a power unit. So it's designed to sit on steel frames, everything like that. Oh, I got the burps. I just had some peanuts. Okay, so it's designed to sit. So let's put it on the 45 Chevy over here okay utilize this frame plus is at the perfect height for me working i don't want it on the ground because then i have to lean over bend over whatever okay so if it's on the frame of the 45 i can move it around for pressure washing start and actually get it started and running it can run on the back of the 45 and then i can take this apart my biggest fear is i take this shaft out things go tinkle tinkle inside and then if you look at the way this is done this is all has to be unbolted and come forward yes forward oh i just created a nightmare all right so we got took a bit to get it figured out how to get this thing to lift and everything like that and we'll set the tripod up with the me phone to record this great event in theory Okay, that was a successful lift. I had to take my time and be very cautious. Okay, it took forever to set it up on the lift because one, I don't know the way to that motor with the trans or the bell housing and the radiator hanging on the front. Okay, I have to trust it like an ex-wife. All right. Plus, we have no outriggers on the green toy because, well, they don't work and never really worked, sort of thing. Okay. Plus, this is uh, not a crane. All right. That's basically as high as the boom goes. All right. So first thing I did was back in nice and tight. And then I did a couple of passes. You can see the tire tracks there, Les Nesman. 
All right, I did a couple of test runs, lifting the motor up and swinging. All right, I couldn't get enough height because uh, the boom does not go back far enough. I forget the degrees that it's limited, but it's not a crane. It's a roto wrecker made famous by Jamie Davis on Highway Through Hell. Okay, so once you get the machine into position, I mean the green toy into position, you do lots of simulated lifts like the Red Shoe Diary and their simulated sex on Showcase. Remember those that show? All right. So once you do the simulated lifts and then you can lift it. Our biggest problem was the clutch rod over there that's hanging down is under here. All right. And I know that the engineers would have thought of that out because the curvature of the rod support there had enough clearance here. Okay. I was going to talk about it in the lift, but I get, you know, I had to get this done and safety is the main concern. Last thing I want to do is flip this machine over and land on top of me. And then Dick flies over and sees my leg sticking out underneath the motor and I'm pinned and Dick saves my life by flying by and landing his helicopter to save my life. So all those passes by the kingdom was to check on my safety. Yeah, right. All right. So let's go see what we're doing over here. Not sure if the camera angle, I mean the me phone angle shows you the degrees and angles that the green toy was sitting at. The ground is on level and I had to do a side lift, okay? In theory, I should have been backed up to it, lifted the motor up, and then lifted over. But I couldn't do that, alright? And I, once this motor's lifted up, I didn't want to move around or anything. In theory, a good crane operator, or... Uh, uh, M M816 Roto Wrecker would have put boards down on the ground. But then I didn't want to, uh, how would you say, run out of reach or lift. I couldn't do anything. And then how do I drive forward? Okay. So I made sure I had the ability to drive. Okay. And stuff like that. Because if I had it up on boards to be level, and then I drive ahead two inches and it falls off. So what I did for safety, just as a caution, I stacked some blocks in here so it wouldn't lean over. But we know the limits of the Roto Wrecker because we've been using it for, well, since 2019. All right, we have the motor sitting on the 45 Chevy. So this is actually the first load it's had since we took ownership of it back in the day. I think it was 1982. It came back to the to the pink house in Alexander, Manitoba. Grandpa still drove it after 47 when he was hit by the train. But the thing is, two weeks later, they had the cab changed out and he was off and going. So now we'll figure out a way to bolt this motor down and figure it out because I want to be able to run it on here, okay? Because I know it's going to be a long time waiting for parts over here, okay? So I have to think of how to get that shaft out. I might, uh, how would you say, ad make an adapter for that shaft to slide out and another one sliding in because I don't want to drop gears or washers or anything like that or shims. Also too, it's neat when you left the motor out and you see stuff that's been dropped over the years. Can you imagine the poor mechanic? You know, maybe it was cold, windy, rainy day or whatever. And this thing was plowing snow and they fixing it and they dropped a nut or a bolt. And then he can't find it. So here it is 50 years later. Here's your nuts and washers that you lost back in the day. All right. Very pleased with this. It's turned out rather well. Let's go have some victory drinks. Okay, we got a nice cool breeze here in the kingdom. Yes, it's getting warm and that sun is warm. We're not used to it. So I've been drinking lots of Kool-Aid. I have to watch how I put my pain medication vodka in there because we mix the Kool-Aid weak, okay? So when you add the vodka, that gives it the sugary flavor or whatever, the sweetness to it. So you have to be very careful how you do it. All right, so here we got some bracketry on here, okay? I bolted that on. We don't have any four inch wide... Um, angle iron or whatever however it's going to work if we have a problem we can weld a strip down here and make it fit i did the template on the other side i come to this side it's got some booger crap on it so it didn't fit once it's up in the air this will square out because i drilled a 9 16 hole for a half inch bolt okay the reason why we want the motor there is in case i uh don't back into anything here we want it flush okay in case we have to load it on something or back it into a building for storage you never know because like seven years ago i worked on this grader so we look at long term and we got everything sitting here perfectly we're looking at taking the oil pan so if we have to drop the oil pan there's nothing here in the road also too with this here the bracketry that i've put on we can take the clutch and everything out and double check the rear main seal because ih are known for the rear main seal to leak and we put washers in behind here okay as spacers because i can hold the motor up and take that bell housing off 
to take the flywheel off for the rear main. If this was in tight, we'd have a problem, okay? And we went over here to the storage trailer and got some good recyclable material. Yes, this is good stuff, yes. And see that little plane up there? That's El Chapo, he comes every day. He's got a funny plane, funny sound. The tail is kind of different on it. Every day he comes, Al Chapo, bringing the drugs. Oops, I shouldn't have said that. All right, but this is to us, it's still good usable material. We're gonna anchor this motor down as if it's gonna sit on here for 10 years, seven years for sure. But we wanna be able to run and test this motor to make sure it works because if we put it back in the grater, oh, let's go to the grater. Okay, over here at the grater. Now, if we put the motor back in the grater and have to drop the oil pan, guess what? We have to lift the motor out because this thing's got like a basement that has no basement. It's a flat house, a ranch house. That's what we'll call it, a ranch. Ba ranch house, no basement. So that'll make it great fun. Once we get this motor anchored, then we can investigate that shaft. Yes, investigate it and have some beers to think about it. Okay, with it being so hot, I had to use the welder and the welding sleigh and then string the cables down and under the green toy. Yes, so that's how we did it. We couldn't use the service truck over there, which would have been backed up and a little bit of cable strung out, but the exhaust isn't vented to the outside of the box, so it would have got hot in there. Something would have overheated and then blown up or something. All right, so we got this welded down and it's just perfect. As I was doing my welds, I got thinking to myself, when grandpa was trucking with this truck when it was brand new in 45, he was most likely picking off complete power units like this in Winnipeg and then hauling it down to Melita Medora area of Manitoba because the big time contractors blew up a motor and they needed it now. Because back then, people couldn't afford the tools or the tools you didn't fix stuff. You had a limited amount of tools. You sent stuff to the machine shop. You sent stuff to the welder. And that's the way it was done back then. So here's history repeating itself. The 45 Chevy three ton truck, I think it is, whatever, that grandpa had and got hit by the train with a motor from that air. So it's just like he's hauling it back in the day. All right, let's go have some beverage because I'm thirsty from all this welding. Okay, 4.30 and I always think it's going to rain, okay? So I put all the tools away, the welding welding sleigh, the welder's all coiled up, everything's put away. Yes, that's because I think it's going to rain right away. All right, so look at the flags, there's a slight breeze. Oh, they're looking good. All right, we moved everything over here. Yes, over here and there's the pizza shit plaque piece of shit pressure washer yes so right now i got the pump going in the black tank and we're chasing the air out yes just pump it through pump it through get rid of the air so we're going to watch that transmission to see what it looks like and we're going to wash the back of this motor make sure it's nice and clean so we can take the clutch apart and maybe blow out the rat because it might overheat when i get it started 10 years from now i don't know all right let's get this done because it's going to be a nice cool job Saturday morning in Whoville and it's just after 10 a.m. and I'm getting ready for work. As you can see, it is pretty sunny out here and actually really warm this morning. This is the temperature we're sitting at right now. It's 21 degrees Celsius, which is 69 degrees Fahrenheit. We even have the feels like on the bottom. Now it's time to head inside, let the dogs out and make breakfast. Almost 11 a.m. and I'm just getting ready to head to work. Sure is warm out here this morning. There's not a cloud in the sky and that sun is really hot. Plus it's getting a little windy out there so that means no sand flies. Let's head inside, let the dogs back in and get to work. 1 p.m. and I'm just getting home for my lunch break. As you can see, there's some clouds in the sky and the sun is hiding behind a few of them. Maybe we'll get some rain because it is pretty hot. This is the temperature we're sitting at right now. It's 25 degrees Celsius, which is 77 degrees Fahrenheit. We even have the feels like on the bottom. Now it's time to head inside, let the dogs out and make lunch. 2 p.m. and I'm just getting ready to head back to work. As you can see, it's starting to get cloudy out and the wind's picking up a little bit as well. The sand flies aren't too bad, so let's head inside and let the dogs back in and get to work. Just after 5 p.m. and I made it home from work, it was a pretty good day. I already got the quad out and I have my dad's supper and stuff, so let's head on over to the kingdom and see what my dad's up to. Almost 5.30 and I made it to the kingdom, now I'll head on down to the shop and see what my dad's up to. 5.30 and we're not doing anything in the kingdom today. My dad's just been pressure washing most of the day, cleaning up the motor and around the area here, that way he can tinker away at it. So let's head inside, grab my dog treats and go back to Whoville and do the weather. 
almost 6 p.m. and I just made it back from the kingdom and put the quad away. This is the temperature we're sitting at right now. It's 26 degrees Celsius, which is 78 degrees Fahrenheit. We even have the fields like on the bottom. It's been extra nice out there today. And as you can see, the wind is picking up. So that means no sand flies. Now it's time to head inside, let the dogs out, make supper and end my day. Okay, 6.30, everything's put away. I am soaked with the pressure washer. Unreal. It just sprayed back on me and got me soaked, but it's so warm out here, I enjoyed it. Yes, it felt good, especially at my age. Not too bad when lovely lady from Playboy wasn't splashing water on me instead. All right, so there we go. Reliving what my grandpa did back in the day. But grandpa would have a deck on the truck. Yeah, get the ramp deck done, and then you can haul around the motor that way. Oh, my. But it's, it was nice pressure washing it. It's at a right height that I can work on it, no problem. So I have to pop that oil pan off, no problems. See, we have to think smarter instead of working harder. All right, look at the flags. They're in their natural state of kind of almost limp. All right, let's go walk the dogs, drink some more. Oh, today was a good excuse to drink and drink some more. And we'll talk to you guys later.